Okay, kidderinos, we're here for chapter two of the science of success. Wallace D. Waddles, the science of getting rich. I'm gonna, we're gonna do this book, and then we're gonna also do some Neville Goddard stuff a little bit later on. So if you're here for manifesting Mondays, or if you're just here to learn how to get rich, it's this is the way to go. So don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe. Comments of discontent will be met with love and humor and. You know, I hope you enjoy this. Hope you guys let me know in the comments. And don't forget to hop over to Mama Delia for all things manifestation, magic, and uh, we do little makeup reviews too. So chapter two, there is a science of getting rich. And if you saw part one, if you saw chapter one, you will see that I will screw up and I will have to reread sentences. I am a regular human. I promise you. So there is a science of getting rich. It is an exact science like algebra or arithmetic. There are certain laws which govern the process of acquiring riches. Once these laws are learned and obeyed by any man, he will get rich within mathematical certainty. The ownership of money and property comes as a result of doing things in a certain way. Those who do things in this certain way, whether on purpose or accidentally, get rich, while those who do not do things in this certain way, no matter how hard they work or how able they are, remain poor. It is a natural law that like causes always produce like effects, and therefore any man or woman who learns to do things in a certain way will infallibly get rich. That above statement is true. That above statement is true is shown by the following facts. Getting rich is not a matter of environment, for if it were, all the people in a certain neighborhood would become wealthy. The people in one city would all be rich, while those of other towns would all be poor. Or inhabitants of one state would roll in wealth, while those of adjoining state would be in poverty. But everywhere we see rich and poor living side by side in the same environment, often engaged in the same vocations. When two men are in the same locality and in the same business, one, get ri one gets rich while the other remains poor. And it shows that getting rich is not primarily a matter of environment. Some environments may be more favorable than others. But when two men are in the same business or in the same neighborhood and one gets rich while the other fails, it indicates that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. And further, the abilities to do things in a certain way is not due solely to the possession of talent for many people who have great talent remain poor, while others who have very little talent get rich. Studying the people who have got rich, we find that they are an average lot in all respects, having no greater talents or abilities than other men. It is evidence that they do not get rich because they possess talents or abilities that other men have not, but because they happen to do things in a certain way. Getting rich is not the result of saving or thrift. Me, uh, many very penurious people are poor. I don't know what that word means. I know what a lot of words mean. I don't know that word. Hey, if you're watching, look it up and put it down below for the rest of us. While free spenders often get rich. So I guess penurious means minding your pennies, I assume. Uh, nor is getting rich due to doing things in which others fail to do. For two men in the same business often do almost exactly the same things, and one gets rich while the other remains poor or becomes bankrupt. From all these things, we must come to the conclusion that getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way. If getting rich is the result of doing things in a certain way, and if like causes always produce like effects, then any man or woman who can do things in a certain way can become rich. And a whole matter is brought within the domain of exact science. The question arises here, whether the certain way may not be so difficult that only a few may follow it. This cannot be true as we have seen so far. I'm sorry. This, see, this is where I'm, I, I get into reading it, then I start screwing up. I think my, my brain works faster than my mouth. This cannot be true as we have seen, comma, so far as natural ability is concerned. Talented people get rich and blockheads get rich. Intellectually brilliant people get rich and very stupid people get rich. Physically strong people get rich and weak, weak and sickly people get rich. Some degree of ability to think and understand is, of course, essential. But in so far natural ability is concerned, any man or woman who has sense enough to read and understand these words can certainly get rich. 
I will help you with that as long as I can read them and not stumble through this. Also, we have seen that it is not a matter of environment. Location counts for something. One would not go to the heart of the Sahara and expect to do successful business. Getting rich involves the necessity of dealing with men and of being where the people are to be dealt with. And if these people are inclined to deal in the way you want to deal, so much the better. But it is but that is about as far as environment goes. If anybody else in your town can get rich, so can you. If anybody else in your state can get rich, so can you. Again, it does not matter choosing some particular business or profession. People get rich in every business and in every profession, while their next door neighbor in the same vocation remains in poverty. It is true that you will do best in a business you like and which is congenial to you. And if you have certain talents that are well-developed, you will do best in a business that calls for the exercise of those talents. Also, you will do best in a business which is suited to your locality. An ice cream parlor would do better in a warm cli climate than in Greenland. A salmon fisher will succeed better in the Northwest than it will in Florida, where there is no salmon. But aside from these general limitations, getting rich is not dependent upon your engaging in some particular business, but upon your, but upon your learning to do things in a certain way. If you are now in business and anybody else in your locality is getting rich in the same business while you are not getting rich, it is because you are not doing things in the same way the other person is doing them. No one is prevented from getting rich by lack of capital. True, as you get capital, the increase becomes more easy and rapid, but one who has capital, capital is already rich and does not need to consider on how to become so. No matter how poor you may be, if you begin to do things in a certain way, you will get rich and you will begin to have capital. The getting of capital is a part of the process of getting rich. It is a part of the result that invariably follows the doing of certain things. You may be the poorest man on the continent. You may be deeply in debt. You may have neither friends, influence, nor resources. But if you begin to do things in this way, you must infallibly begin to get rich. For like causes produce like effects. If you have no capital, you can get capital. If you are in the wrong business, you can get into the right business. If you are in the long, wrong location, you can go to the right location. And you can do so by beginning in your present business and your present location to do things in the certain way which cause success. That was a really good chapter. So let's see, what's chapter three? Let's see how long this is. Okay, we'll do this one tomorrow. Opportunity to monopolize. But yeah, I, like, so that chapter is all about, you know, basically it said to me, get rid of all your excuses. There's no reason why you can't become rich. So get those out of your head before we start chapter three. Well, they have an easier time or they're in blah, blah, blah. Nope. Nope. I went from big city, East coast, New York, Philadelphia. I'm now living in the rural outskirts of Arkansas and I'm still okay. So I think in these days and times, especially with, uh, the pandemic and, and all that crap going on and with the economy, I think we need to be reminded that we are in control of our own destiny. We're in control and we can make as much money as we want and we shouldn't have to rely on anybody or anything or any government to tell us how much we can or can't have. So that was chapter two. If you didn't get to read chapter one, go, go back and look that video up and we will have chapter three tomorrow. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe, comments, and utterances of discontent will be met with love. And um, head over to the store. I'll have everything listed below. Head over to the store if you need any magical products. I have new stuff being listed and uh, updated all the time. And hope you have a great night.